Hello, everyone. Jose J. Garcia with Garcia Mahome University here. So my guest for today, she is out of Florida, a place where I like to be right about now. Uh, she's a real estate investor, a realtor, and an entrepreneur. Lindsay, how are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing great, doing great. Yes. Yeah, so what part of Florida, if I may ask? Uh, I'm over on the Space Coast, so like Cocoa Beach, NASA. Okay. Uh, I'm in Melbourne, so the south part of the county, but you know, the east coast of Florida. Nice, nice. Yeah, so I've seen a lot of the stuff we were talking off air there for a minute, a lot of the flips, and you are killing it out in the market. Got a lot of questions on that in real estate regarded anyway, but for people that don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, actually, I started, I got my real estate license back in 2015. I, you know, I started out trying to do the retail side. Um, then I had somebody approach me uh, probably later that year, early 2016, about this thing called wholesaling, which kind of intrigued me a little bit. So I started diving into that. And then um, later in 2016, I started working with a pretty big wholesale company out here in Central Florida. Um, you know, I did that for a couple of years. And then 2017, I said, I'm going to get my first flip. So I made that a goal throughout the year, December 18th of that 2017. I finally closed my first flip. It was a short you know, right down to the, the finish line right there, but I did get it. And then I just decided to, to start flipping more and more and got out of wholesaling. And that's predominantly what I'm doing now. So. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So what were the, what would you say are the major challenges when you did get starting into the flip? And, and I think most uh, real estate investors uh, when they get into is probably wholesale what they get into first and they kind of progress more into, but when you did get into the investment flips, what were some of the major challenges more, more so? Um, you know, I didn't have any clue what I was doing <laughs> to be honest. So that was a challenge in and of itself. When you get into flip, you know, a lot of people, you know, I want to flip, I want to flip, but there's a lot more to it than what people may Think. So um, what I did is I actually partnered with somebody who did know what they were doing. Um, however, it was up to me to make a lot of the decisions. You know, I think one of the biggest struggles with people starting in the business is finding a, finding the contractors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was very fortunate in the fact that, um, you know, I was in the service industry for a long time locally. So I knew a lot of people. So I, you know, just started making those connections when I had my first flip. Um, I, you know, my biggest goal was to try and find the people that I wanted to use and not so much the people that my partner had, uh, just so I could get that experience. Um, so really, I just, you know, I went out there, I asked, like, who do you recommend? And I just tried to get these people that I didn't already know or have by, you know, a strong referral basis, which I think is extremely important. Absolutely. But you already said one thing that caught my attention there, and that was you didn't know what you were doing, but you made it happen. You still took initiative. You took that leap of faith. You went at it. And clearly, you know what you're doing now. So it was that initiative startup. Too many people, you know, I coach people how to do uh, mobile home investing also. And it's always that. Well, I just don't know enough yet. I just need to. It's always that hold back, hold back, hold back. And they're never going to be paralysis. Right. paralysis. It's a thing. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. And the, and the thing is like, you're never going to know everything because even if you learn so much by the time, you know, when you get out there, you're going to find those, oh my gosh, kind of moments that wasn't in the book. It wasn't supposed no. to be, you no. know, so definitely huge on that without disclosing too much of your business. How many deals have you flipped to date? I think the last time I counted, I've, I've I think I might've closed 16, 16 ish. So That's I true. have, you know, about, I have five active right now. One I'm closing on Monday of the five, uh, actually six, cause I got two closing. So I've got four fully active and then two that I'm, you know, closing to buy right now. Right, right. Now, are these mostly single family or do you do any multi-door kind of investments? Um, just mostly single family. Um, yeah, that's just predominantly what I focused on. I don't really, I haven't really dove into the multifamily just yet. However, there was a triplex oceanfront that caught my attention that I was trying to get. There you go. Now I get right off the of me. I was mad. Oh, uh, so. yeah. So when it comes to the properties themselves, uh, what are some of the things you find unexpectedly during the rehabs? Well, I mean, I can honestly say the older the house, the more problems you're going to run into. Um, I actually just uh, did my first 1950s house and mm. I did everything, you know, you know, complete repipe, complete rewire, roof, windows, you know, everything from top to bottom. But, you know, with that, you start opening things up. I didn't think I was going to have to do a full rewire. I did knew that I was going to have to do a repipe. So I just think that the older the houses 
are, you have to take some of that into consideration. Um, you know, there's just my, my, one of my biggest philosophies is like, when you start opening things up, you find more things. So yeah. that's, that's just something you always have to prepare for, you know, at, at the end of the day, always have that oops factor budgeted into your, your original budget. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just said, there's no investment the same. There's no deal the same. No investor, you know, it goes on. Is there one investment you can think of? You were just glad you got it done over with? Um, my first flip. <laughs> Usually the hardest, I'm not right? not going to lie. That one was, um, that one took me a year. Oh, that wow. That took me a year, yes. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that was one of those situations what could go wrong did go wrong. Um, maybe the guidance that I could have had would have been, you know, could have been a little bit better. Um, but yeah, that was probably my uh, number one, like, was ready to close that one up. But I wasn't going to let that stop me. <laughs> I was yeah. like, all right, it's a great learning experience. Now, how can I be better for the next several ones? But yeah, that one was very challenging. It was also a big project, too. So well, big project. The first one, those are always the hardest. That's the intro to, you know, welcome to real estate investing for sure. Right. Now, in comparison to what would you say is your best investment, the best deal? Mm, I mean, that's tough to say because I got a couple good ones right now. I got one right now. <laughs> well, they get better. <laughs> that's on the beach that there's a new comp that just gave me uh, an after repair value of almost $100,000 more than what I originally wow. budgeted or intended. So that could be my best deal. So get back to me in about four months when I finish that one up and I can maybe revisit that. Uh, but, you know, honestly, other than that, I had actually a really good solid deal. Um, the one that I'm closing on that I just finished up, that was the 1950s house. That one's going to be a pretty big, probably the most profitable one yet. Okay. Well, there you go. Good stuff. So as you may be aware, I am a mobile home investor. I call it the hidden side through real estate. Uh, I coach and, of course, you know, teach other investors how to do it. Have you ever invested in, real, in uh, mobile homes or thought about mobile homes? I have not. Um, you know, I actually, uh, my my old company that I work for, Wholesale, he just started getting into uh, mobile homes pretty in depth. But it was just something like um, we had one of the guys that actually pulled a lot of wholesale deals from mobile homes and started specializing that which were, I think led into some of the mobile home parks but I was gone by that time so I haven't I haven't personally you know dove into it I thought about it but you know you know how that can go there's so many different ways you can make money and it's you know I just started focusing on the flips and that's where I've been well, if you do run into one or some, you know where to reach out to now. I'd be happy I thought to about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, add to. Why not? Do you think having a license being a realtor gives you an edge when it comes to investing? I mean, it doesn't hurt. Is it necessary? Not by any means, but it doesn't hurt. So, you know, for me, I have, you know, I have certain relationships with the realtors um, that, you know, you know, aside from the brokerage that I work with, you know, when I list my own properties, I just, you know, I get to list it for a flat fee. Um, so I save some costs there on the back end. Um, I do have access to, to other things, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you don't need it. So does it hurt? No. Does it benefit? Yeah, you can benefit from it, but it's just not a necessity. Can people partner up with a re realtor to I'm get sorry? certain listings or be able to even comp certain areas is that possible people reach out to you just that I, I didn't catch the beginning of that question i'm sorry can, can people partner up with a realtor yeah i don't see why not you know i think you know in this business it's all about relationships mm -hmm. right so you know i have spent several several years trying to build and you know get some of those relationships going you know even as a realtor for me if i come across a property i tell the real I was like, you bring me the deal, you take both sides of the commission and negotiate however you want. I don't need it. Just bring me the deal. So that's actually benefited me, you know, significantly here recently. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, more than anything, it's about the relationship. If you build a relationship, yes, you can partner. Yes, you can get anything, you know, done that you need to get done. You just got to find that right person for it. There you go. For those of you listening, that's a huge tip right there. Jump on that one. You dress for success anyway. I've seen a lot of the media you post. Uh, let's talk about appearance real quick, especially getting into um, even mobile home, mobile home real estate uh, investing. How important would you say appearance is? Um, 
you know, Florida's pretty relaxed. I will say that, you know, the people, you have a lot of realtors and things of that sort. They're not always dressed up to the top notch, but I think in different markets, yes, it absolutely matters. Um, you know, for me, it's just more about being me real and who I am. This is who I am. This is what you get, you know? So actually my, my appearance mostly is cowboy boots and jeans, right? But not when it's a hundred degrees outside. <laughs> Um, you know, so it's just, I, I think that yes, appearance does, it does factor in. You don't necessarily want to go meet somebody and, you know, ripped up shorts and flip flops for the first time. Right. So it's one of those things where, I mean, yes, appearance is, you know, you have to maintain a, you know, a good presence, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, I feel like I'm just, I need to be me and who I am too, because regardless, you're going to get what you get and it's going to be the best that I can give. So. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. And it is hot. Florida is definitely hot. Yes. I love heat. That's personally that or record at any given time, but yeah. not everybody agrees with that, I suppose. How have you found is the best way to do business with people, get people to do business with you? Is there a strategy you use or? Honestly, I treat everybody that works with me as they're a part of my team. I don't ever make them think that they're working for me. I'm their boss. It's more of a team aspect. Um, you know, when it comes to the contractors, it's a matter of, you know, listen, how can I make your life easier? Let's communicate. I'm willing to do what I need to do. We just, if, as long as we have an open line of communication, I will, I can promise you I'll do everything in my power to have the job run smoothly. Um, so it's just, I, I approach it more as a team factor. I don't always, you know, cheaper is not always better in my perspective. Um, I will pay these, you know, if I have 15 change orders, I'm going to keep track of these change orders and I expect to get charged for the change orders within reason, right? So it's a matter of like, they, they know that I'm going to pay them for everything that they're doing. I'm not expecting anything for free and they go above and beyond for me when that happens. Do I run into issues? Yes. Did I just fire a plumber? Yes. Did I just fire an AC guy? Yes. So sometimes it still happens, but you know, you, it's still, it's a work in progress. You find these people that want to be a part of your team and have the bigger picture and the longer, you know, the overall, the, the, the longer vision, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I give people chances. Um, but you know, you only have so many before I have to move on. But my well, main people for the most part, it's, it's definitely just, you know, treating them as they're me is I would want to be treated. It doesn't matter the status or level, as long as, you know, I treat them with respect and they treat me with respect and you're part of my team. We work together. Cheaper labor is not always better. That was good. I like that because I think, and again, regardless mobile homes or real estate, handyman and contractors are some of the hardest tests to deal with. Take away the actual investment itself. I've heard some investors say, if I could just get my contractors to work, I'd be all right. So they're definitely a struggle in a sense, but it, it's all how you structure. And like you said, a team, I agree with that. It's a whole team. Everybody has to do their part or it doesn't work right. right. What do you think keeps you going? Keeps you killing it like you are. Honestly, I just love the challenge. It's like, all right, well, now I can do two houses at a time. Let me try three. All right, now I can do three. Let me try four. So it's just like, I always try and just take on more and more and more um, just to see what I can handle, you know? Um, wow. just keep that plate full and, you know, when the opportunities, especially in this market right now, if there are opportunities there, I'm just going to grab it. You know, I've obviously had to make some adjustments in my numbers to be able to have these opportunities. But at the end of the day, I mean, I love the challenges. I love the, the I love project managing. I didn't realize how much I actually love project managing until I started doing a lot of this. So, you know, I love being able to do the designs and just be creative and try to add value um, in certain places when and where I can. And, you know, I just ultimately the challenges. You know, let me just get a couple more. Let me see if I can run eight at a time. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible yet, but. You know. Speaking like a true entrepreneur. I like it. Yes, ma'am. So what's one thing you could say to somebody getting started trying to get into investing? just get into it. You know, I think that when I early, early on, I did suffer from the whole analysis paralysis thing. You know, I wanted to get all this information as education important. Absolutely. But if I can just say anything, find somebody to partner with and, um, you know, if you need them to guide you through it, then, you know, do it. You know, that's how I got started. My first three flips at least were, you know, with partners and, you know, from there I wanted to do my own. So, I mean, whatever it takes, just get in and do it. You know, just don't stop, you know, or stop thinking and just get out there and do it. And that's exactly what I just jumped into it like full force. So 
Well, one of my coaches would say, stop talking about it and get it done. And yes, I agree with that very much. So what is next for you? What's your next venture besides multiplying? Um, you know, honestly, right now I've been studying, uh, it's actually been put on hold a little bit, but starting to get my residential contractor license. So I do really want to get into the new construction. Um, you know, honestly in Florida, we, if, if you're familiar, if anybody's familiar, we've had pretty much the same types of, you know, transit, the, the traditional houses, right? So for me, I want to change that up a little bit. I'm always about doing things completely off the rocker, you know, like, so this, the designs, I just want to, you know, bring a higher end value to a more affordable price, which is totally doable. It's just, you know, we've had the same cookie cutter houses, I feel like since the seventies and it's time for a change, you know? <laughs> so that's my, that's my longer vision, my long-term vision, but I just need to get back to, to getting that license to be able to do that or to want to do it myself. Okay. Absolutely. One last question for you, but I am interested. Do you coach people how to do this? Uh, can, if somebody came to you, do you have a program of some sort you can walk them through an investment or? Um, I don't. I mean, I do help people when they ask me questions, but I've never had a structured program as far as, um, you know, coaching one on one. So it's, it's just a matter of somebody has questions for me. You know, I get, you know, people ask me things all the time. So I'll help out when I can or guide them in the right direction to where they need to go. But um, I don't have a personal coaching program at a time or at this time. Maybe something you can put on your bucket list. You sound ready. So, and I'm sure people could use yeah, a lot you know, of that. It's after. like as an entrepreneur too, it's like, I always feel like it's never enough. Like I still need to, I still need to learn more before I feel like I can teach people, you know? So it's one of those things where I've, I've actually battled with as an entrepreneur and somebody that's been in the business a little while, you know, I just, I don't feel, I mean, I know I can, but it's just one of those well, things. We're always that, learning. You know, we, we never stop about, learning. Right? you always want to give your best and provide your best. So, you know, I, you know, I probably will at some point, but right now okay. I just. Good deal. Last question for you. What is the best success quote? Do you have one? Yeah, actually one thing that kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things is Napoleon Hill. He has a quote that says every adversity, every failure, um, comes with the seed of a greater benefit. So it's one of those things where, you know, you take a, a failure instead of, you know, saying, why me, why is this happening? You know, ask myself, what did I learn? You know, where did I mess up or where did something go wrong? And how can I change to be better for the next time? So that for me is giving me the mentality to keep pushing forward and not just give up, right? So it's a matter of you're gonna fail as a, as a, as a successful person going in that route you I mean you're going to you're going to run into hiccups you're going to run into problems you're going to run into failures you're going to run into uh no's so you just have to be able to pick yourself up push through keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing so that's actually what's changed my mentality for quite some time and Napoleon he was amazing so very good absolutely well Lindsay it is awesome having you on here I'm sure some people may want to reach out to you uh, after listening to this podcast here, is there a contact email they can reach out to you or a website you may have? Um, yeah, it's kind of complicated. Lindsay at Lindsay's home solutions.com or Lindsay's home solutions.com is my website, which is kind of in transition right now, but honestly, the best way to reach me is just through Facebook. Okay. And we'll add those links to the bottom of this video. So for those of you listening in, you know, you can just click on that and reach out to Lindsay. I'm sure she'll help you the best of her ability. But all right, Lindsay, it has been awesome having you on here. I'm sure we'll talk again. Yes. Thank you for having me. All right. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay.